and the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I've created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. Today we're going to talk about the flood. Warning, I'm not swearing in today's episode. This is something, though, that I think I'd like all ages to see and think about. So with the Noah movie being recently released on Netflix, Facebook and the social media are all abuzz again about Noah. So I decided to do an episode about it and whether Noah's Ark is possible or not. I was pretty excited to see Noah because it was directed by one of my favorite directors, Darren Aronofsky. He's directed movies like Black Swan, Requiem for a Dream, The Wrestler, really amazing movies. And I've got to say, Russell Crowe didn't look a day over 600. So we're going to start really quickly on the differences between the movie and the Bible, just so we can get that out of the way. That's not the focus of the show, but we're going to talk about it just really briefly. There were no rock monsters helping Noah build the ark. What's his bucket was not hiding on the ship. There were no castaways. Noah didn't debate whether he should kill his granddaughter or not. And a bunch more stupid stuff. But it still caused quite the controversy. Everyone from Glenn Beck to Ken Ham were all up in arms about it, saying how terrible it is and its atrocity and blasphemy and evil and disgusting. And, and of course, there's raging debates all over the social media. And there's even quite a few anti-Noah movie Facebook pages. So you might be thinking, what's the big deal? The Bible's not supposed to be taken literally, especially the Old Testament. It's parables, or it's figurative, or symbolic, or whatever, right? Why are people so upset about this? There are a lot of Christians who still take the Bible literally. And overall in America, 30% of people take it literally. 3 in 10 people take the Bible literally. So it's probably also worth mentioning about 77% of the United States population is Christian. Anyway, we're not going to talk about how different the movie is anymore because I don't really care that much because a 600 year old man building the ark by himself is way more believable than rock monsters helping him. All right, so is it possible? No. Sorry I'm being so blunt, this is a debunking episode. But before you get angry with me, I'm going to explain both sides of the debate. I'm doing a really simplified version of both sides, so in the description of the video, there's going to be links to the best articles both for and against the flood story being true or not. I'm leaning towards science. However, to be fair, I am going to play by a lot of their rules, so if you're a literalist, please stick around. And if you want to yell at me in the comments, please watch the whole video first so you don't make a fool of yourself. So we're going to go through this pretty much in order. So grab whatever Bible you have if you want to follow along or check it out afterwards. It's Genesis chapters 6 through 9. Anyway, enough introduction. Let's jump in and get going. Okay, so the first thing you probably didn't know about Noah's Ark is that it's a story that's older than the Old Testament. The Old Testament was written between 5 and 600 BC, and the story of Noah's Ark is supposed to take place around 2000 BC-ish. The earliest known written flood myth is the Sumerian flood myth, and it can be found in the Epic of Ziu Sudra, or whatever that says. I don't know how to say it. And a little later, there were very similar Mesopotamian flood myths, and they appear in the Epic of Atahasis, that word right there, as well as the Epic of Gilgamesh. And you should really check these out. See these tablets here? We actually have this stuff. It's pretty cool. I mean, they're like 11 to 1600 years older than the Old Testament. They were written between 17 and 2100 BC. The Noah character was named Utnapisht. I... Just look at the name again. All right, so let's get to the Bible itself. Right at the beginning, God regrets making people, at least these evil people, which was everyone on the planet except for like eight of them. In case you didn't get my Russell Crowe joke earlier about him not looking a day over 600, Noah was 600 when he built the ark. Do you see any problems with that? There has never, ever been a person who has lived near 600. Almost 
everybody in the history of the human race, no matter how far back we have dug, have rarely lived to be a hundred, and the very few that have, have only lived a little past it. And that's only in recent years. It's completely ridiculous. But that has nothing to do with the Ark itself and whether the flood is possible. Of course, I don't think it would be possible for a human man to live to be 600 since people can't live that long, at least not yet. Science! So God tells Noah to build the Ark and he gives him very specific dimensions. 300 cubits by, you know what? Nobody knows what a cubit is. We're gonna do American feet. 450 to 520 feet long, 75 to 86 feet wide, 45 to 52 feet high, depending on what measurement of cubits you use. Cubits like, uh, it's supposed to be something from like the fist to the, to the elbow. Also, the Ark had three internal decks or levels and a big flipping door on the side for all the animals to come in and out of. Also, it had a little sohar on top, which is either a roof or a skylight. We'll get back to that little window thing up there later. So God tells Noah to kill every living thing. Plants, mammals, creepy crawlers, amphibians, lizards, marsupials. God's like, act now, everything must go. Specifically, what he said was, I'm going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. Why did he make all this if he's just going to kill everything? Good question. Why did he create everything just to kill them? Because people turned evil. So, every plant, animal, and babies of the evil people who didn't do anything must be destroyed. Efficient God, really efficient. Destroy the whole planet just to get rid of some people. But God did tell Noah he'd spare him and his family, eight of them, his three sons, their wives, and his wife. So God tells Noah specifically what animals to take and to pack food for everybody, the family, and all the animals on the boat. And just as a side note, just a few chapters earlier is where God has Adam name all the animals. Let's see ya, uh, rat, bat, Cat, run me today. Anyway, I sidetracked. That's not important. So, of course, you know, God told Noah that two of every kind of animal needed to get onto the boat. But what you may not have known is that he also had God bring seven pairs, so 14, of every clean animal, and also seven pairs of every bird. Now you're probably wondering, what the flip is a clean animal? So clean and unclean animals are animals that you may eat or sacrifice. Oh, and as a side note, did you know there are quite a few animals that need more than two people to reproduce? More than two people, they're animals. <laughs> they don't need people to reproduce. Well, there are a lot of animals that you'd need more than two to reproduce. In fact, there's a whole thing about cheetahs not working on the ark. There's a, oh, maybe I'll put that in the link. Yeah. How would they all fit in the boat? Because according to the story and the young earth creationists, we would actually need a little over three million animals if they were being honest with themselves, which they're not. Every living individual would have less than about a cubic foot of space on the ark. And I'll explain a little bit more about how they break the animals down in a second. You can see a very detailed explanation of this and why there's so many animals in the link I put in there from the um, National Center for Science Education, nsce.com. So check out the link in the description for that. In fact, that goes through the whole thing. So there you go. Three million animals wouldn't fit on the boat. We're done, proved them wrong. Let's get out of here. No, just kidding. We're going by their rules, so we're gonna go by their numbers and we're gonna disprove their, you'll soon to see extremely ridiculous numbers. If we did it on just our terms, too easy. Way too easy. All right, so remember how <laughs> we said that over three million number earlier? Forget about it. They are arguing it's between 1,300 and 50,000. And the 50,000, they just, added some on to satisfy the most skeptical. <laughs> Whatever. They gave us an inch, we'll give them a mile. So how did they get it dwindled down to this number? They took two of every animal of their kind and took the word kinds and meant that to mean like 
the basic of a species. For example, like one kind of monkey, which after the flood would spread all the diversity of the different kinds of monkeys, and one kind of dog, one kind of cat, and so on and so on. You get the idea, right? That is ridiculous to say the least. It gets better. Dinosaurs. Yeah, we're actually gonna talk about dinosaurs. A lot of them believe that dinosaurs fit on the ark too, that they lived at the same time as humans, even though they were extinct 60 million years before humans were even here. Today, we have over 188,000 species alive. So that's still well over 50,000, right? Shh, gotta clarify real quick. That 188,000 was also meant to be in pairs and whatnot. So that's what that number is to fit on the ark. But that does not include insects. And we know of over 950,000 and are discovering more literally every day. And 4,000 years ago, there were probably more species alive because before the Industrial Revolution, when we came and screwed up the whole planet, there were probably a lot more animals then. Did I mention that over 99% of all species that have ever existed are extinct? So yeah, to fit all of the animals, we couldn't even fit what's alive today. Actually, I can't say that for sure yet because there's more math to it than that. I mean, we've got to take the amount of animals and we're using their 50,000 and put it into the ark, which we have the size for. And luckily they've taken the liberty to average the size of animals out for us to be the average size of a sheep. How they got that, I'm not quite sure, but we're gonna go with their thing. And I love this, one of the sites, and this is in the description, and this is one of the better ones. Remember, I used really good ones. Said that the non-believers estimates are not surprising considering the atheist worldview. <laughs> what? Okay, remember how I said three in 10 Americans believe the Old Testament to be literal and 77% of Americans are Christian? That means more Christians don't take the Old Testament literally than Christians that do. So does that leave us 23% of atheists? No. We also have Muslims, we have Hindus, we have Buddhists, etc. Et in America, we have 2.4 to 7% atheists, depending on how you define it. And only the 2.4 define themselves as atheists. Where the flipping fetch and frick are they getting these persecution complexes? Don't you need extra animals for all the carnivores? That's a good question, Alice. Did they need to pack extra animals for meat for the carnivores? No, and do you know why? Because according to them, there were no carnivores until after the flood. Yeah, those big teeth that the lions had, they were to chew vegetables and people didn't eat them either. As usual, we have fossils going like millions of years back before people even, the animals were eating other animals. That is just, oh my gosh, the level of dumb is offensive on that one. If you are ignorant of the facts, that doesn't make you stupid. That's not a problem. Just because you don't know something and have never heard it, and you think something else because you've been told it, that doesn't make you stupid. What makes you stupid is being told and shown the facts and understanding how they work. That's also key, understanding how they work. A lot of people are told the facts and they still don't believe it, pretty much because they don't understand it. But these guys have had the explanations told quite explicitly to them and they still don't believe it. And that is stupid. Or maybe not, maybe they just don't get it. Over their head. The evidence is there. I mean, it's physical evidence. This isn't just stuff from the imagination. The food would rot. Yes, Ellis, you are correct. The food would rot. Doesn't matter what kind of food they bring on, it would rot. You could say, hey, well, fresh fruits definitely wouldn't last a year, especially in this dark, dank, humid place. It's gotta be humid. It's raining for 40 freaking days. Enough to flood the earth, right? So it's not gonna work. Yeah, it would rot. Doesn't matter what kind of food you bring. You bring vegetables, rotten. Fruit, rotten. Anyway, we're, we're gonna get back to the food in detail on the next episode. Now we have two workable pieces of information here. We know how many animals there are, according to them, and we know how big the boat is, according to the Bible. So the big question is, can they fit on the boat? And we're gonna answer that tomorrow or the next day, depending on how long it takes me to edit the video.
And that's all the time we have for today. So if you don't hate me for that episode, be a neighbor and subscribe. Click on that subscribe button down there. Hit it, push it, subscribe. Please be my neighbor. I need more neighbors. What you doing? Let's see where you are. <laughs> I'm on the road.